Um, I'm here again with a follow-up interview with Adrian from Assuming We Survive. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. So we're going to start with a little warm-up. Okay. Um, so you're missing out on The Walking Dead tonight. Like, how do you feel about that? Um, basically, since the new season started, I've missed out on all of it because we're on tour. So I, I'm bummed out, but it's kind of exciting because that means when I do get home from tour, I'll be able to, like, just watch every episode, like, back-to-back. -back. So... I won't be all stressed out what's going to happen next week. So I'm, I'm kind of okay with it. Alrighty. So you probably miss a couple more shows while you're on tour. What are some other shows that you're disappointed about missing? I'm a big food nerd, so beating Bobby Flay. There's the Chopped Bobby Flay edition I'm missing. Um, Gold Rush. Sacred Steel Bikes. Uh, yeah, all kinds of random fun stuff. Alrighty. Um, to someone who has never listened to your band or your music, how would you describe it? I'd say fun and energetic and positive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I like to think that we have a positive message. So, yeah, I guess it would be that. So what is the message that you would like to convey to your listeners? I think anyone that knows us or has been to a show, like, our message is always simple. It's always, like, it's very easy to be negative. It's hard to be positive. So fight for being positive. You know, uh, no matter what you're going through, there's always a positive outcome no matter what it is that you're dealing with, and you're not alone. There's plenty of people out there that have been through the same things, are going through the same things, are going through different things, but can still relate. So if you're ever having any bad days or you're going through whatever you're going through, just reach out to someone and, and make sure that you know, you're not alone. Just like, uh, you know, like you can always reach out to us, and we'll always try our best to like write everybody back and uh, try to give the best advice we possibly can. You do a pretty good job with that. Um, so who are some of your musical influences? They're like all over the board, but I, I guess like Green Day, we like Green Day, we like Thrice, um, we love A Day to Remember, um, old school punk rock stuff like Goldfinger, MXPX, um, Phil Collins, Shania Twain, Dionne Warwick, Snoop Dogg, those are basically it. Alrighty. Um, is there any type of music that you like or listen to that might surprise your listeners? I love country. You know what I mean? I think, I think the one thing about music is, or at least about our band, is that we don't, we don't listen to only rock or only pop punk or only metal. Like, we listen to literally everything. And if it's a good song, it's a good song. And you know what I mean? And I think that's one of the cool things is, like, you know, to, to broaden your horizons, to open up to the possibilities of things that you might not be used to, like other genres of music. You'll, you'll, you'll find something in yourself that's kind of cool, something you may not, not have known. You know, a lot of people, they hate on country, and then they, you know, they hear that one good song, and then they're like, you know, this ain't that bad, which is not that bad. Okay. And you... <laughs> so you recently went on Warp Tour. What do you remember most? Oh, the heat. <laughs> like, the walking distances. I think we, we checked every day. I think the least amount of walking we did was, like, 12 miles a day. And that was like the least amount that we did. But uh, I mean, I remember everything from Warped Tour. That was the funnest eight weeks of our lives. It was so awesome. We made so many good friends, so many good memories. So Warped Tour is rad. What is one thing you wish you could forget? We were playing Phoenix and we did the charity bowling and I got food poisoning. And I was literally on my deathbed and everyone was like, dude, should we cancel the show? I was like, there's no way I'm gonna cancel the show. So I think, if anything, it'd be like, I wish I could forget how I felt on stage that day, because I was literally a zombie. And you were there, right? Yeah. It was so hard to sing. Every time I'd like, take a breath or sing, like, I would cramp up. And it was just so painful. And, and plus, it was like super humid that day in Arizona. And so hot. It was just miserable. Um, was it what you expected? It was more. It was better than I expected. You know what I mean? I think that's like any tour, though. Every, no matter how many times you go on tour, every tour is different. There's always something new. There's always more to learn. But it was better than I expected, you know? We all went in with this expectation, and it ended up being twice the expectations. So it's pretty awesome. And did you have any fangirl moments, like when you met anybody? I had a fangirl moment. We, uh, one of the Warped Tour after parties was uh, the interpreters were doing live punk rock karaoke. And uh, Kevin Lyman and I sang Bro Him at the end. It was the last song of the night, so me and Kevin sang Bro Him. And then after that, Kevin like would see me and be like, this is the best punk rock singer on Warped Tour, and I would just fangirl every time. It's Kevin Lyman. <laughs> so. 
and you also released your first album. Like, how does that feel? It feels good to have like a first full length record. Like, before in the past, it's always been like six songs, I think was the most that we released at a time. So it's nice to release 11. And, uh, you know, even like on this tour, is supporting the new record, we get to play like a long set, which on Warped Tour, I think it was like 25 minutes every day, which is like, that's like walking on stage and being like, what's up, we're Studio Survive, good night. You know what I mean? It goes by so fast. And I think it's so nice playing like this, you know, this headliner tour where we could play like 10 to 11 songs. So that's pretty nice. Uh, what's your favorite song on the album? Hmm, I have three, to be honest. Next to Me, which I love. It's an acoustic song that we did. Fucking Phil. Next to Me, we did with Alexis Dunlap. Uh, it's one of my favorite songs. Uh, it's about touring and about missing the person that, you know, or the people that you leave behind. Um, and then I really like Love is Torture, which I did with Dan Arnold. Um, it's a very passionate song. And then I really like No Fairy Tale. So No Fairy Tale is about, it's basically about, you know, a lot of people see this life as it being very glamorous and, and it's always a party. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of partying. You have a good time. You get to meet new people every day and you get to hang out with bands that you love. So it's a lot of fun, but it's a lot of work, and a lot of people don't understand how much work it is. It's a lot of time away from home. It's a lot of sacrifices. It's financial sacrifices, but you don't, you know, if you love it that much, you do it. But it is a lot of work. This is one of those songs. That's one of my favorite songs as well. Um, how did you determine which songs made it onto the album? It was a group effort for sure. I think when we went into writing the new record, we wrote anywhere between, I think it was like 15 to 18 songs. Mm -hmm. And then when we went to pre-production, you know, those songs kind of dwindled down to, I think it was about 14. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, we just tracked it and we were listening to them and it was the, we kept the songs that we really loved. All right. So what was your vision when you were like making the album? My vision was for it to rock. <laughs> no, I really wanted a sing-along record. You know, one of those records where people listen to, they love it and it's catchy, but then like at shows, it like, it's a just every song is sing-along. You know what I mean? Where everybody can interact and be part of the songs live. Um, so there were some songs left on the cutting floor. Do you have a plan of what you're going to do with those songs, or? Well, you know, we'll, we'll probably throw them in this next rotation of maybes for the next record, uh, which we already started writing. So we're already starting to write more songs for the next record. Um, oh my gosh, drama, you're so hot. Uh, but yeah, basically, you know, just keeping them, you know, in the back burner until we're ready to, to start the pre-production for the next record. Alrighty. Um, so, have you received a lot of feedback on the album? And what are some of the best? Yeah, we have. Like, uh, ev everyone seems to enjoy it, which makes me happy. Um, you know, I mean, that's the goal. It's like, we're happy with the record. We just want other people to be happy with it as well and enjoy it. Um, you know, the best feedbacks are always when people can connect to a certain song. They're like, you know, this song helps me go through this or did this. That makes me happy. Uh, so, was there like a single moment that you realized that music was what you wanted to do? Oh yeah, like uh, my mom took me to a Chuck Berry concert in Germany and I think I was like 13 and that's what made me want to play. Like I saw him on stage just rocking out, playing oldies that I grew up on, that I loved. Uh, and that's, I was like, yep, I'm gonna do this. So yeah, were your parents supportive of this choice? Oh, yeah. yeah, my mom and my dad were both into music so it kind of helped. Did you write songs as a kid, like a young? Oh yeah, they were horrible, but they were, they were awesome. What were they about? About love and about not getting uh, allowances and stuff like that. Just being an angry kid because my parents wouldn't give me five bucks for not cleaning the house. Could you sing one? I couldn't remember. <laughs> but if I can, I'll think of it. And if I can find it, next interview, I'll, I'll come prepared. All right. <laughs> um, so it's the third night of tour so far. What are your feelings like about the tour? Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. Like. Um, I love being on the road. Um, it's not that I don't love being at home. I do love being at home, but you know, I, I feel so normal on the road. You know, I'm with my peers, and I get to, to see all these friends and fans that we made across the country and see how they're doing and catch up with them, which is really cool. And um, 
just to see how their lives are doing and, and like hopefully that one show that we play for them is something that helps their week maybe it makes their day you know what i mean so i love it day three i'm so pumped so is there something about like one show that's happened that really excites you or you know what i every show is fun even shows like where we haven't played that city or something because it's it, you don't know what to expect so it's exciting um, but very, very much looking forward to uh, Pittsburgh's going to be crazy. Denver's going to be crazy. Um, we're jumping on four dates with Ice Nine Kills, so that's going to be fun. And that's uh, New York, New Jersey, Hartford, Connecticut, with a, with a band that I manage from Hartford, Connecticut, Half Hearted. They're going to be playing that show with us, too, so that's kind of cool. So very proud of those boys. And, uh, yeah, so those are actually every show, really. And how do you prepare for, like, shows? You don't want to hear that one. Okay. <laughs> I, so I'm a singer, and I, like, don't, yeah, don't even worry about it. Uh, do, you, do you ever get tired of playing the same songs, like, over every night? Cer certain songs, yeah. Certain songs we've been playing, though, for, like, three, four years. Yeah. You know what I mean? And not that I get tired. It's just, that's why it's so nice to be on a tour like this, where we're playing new music, you know, songs we've never played before. Yeah. So that's nice. But, I mean... All the songs are fun, you know what I mean? And it especially makes it fun because the songs that we do play that are older, people love, and they, they sing it the loudest, so it makes them fun. How do you try to like mix it up so that you don't get bored? <laughs> uh, I'll inadvertently sing a song in Spanish and no one will notice. <laughs> okay, and so if you were born the opposite gender, what would your name be? Adriana. Alrighty. And who's the messiest on tour? Just call him out. <laughs> it's not going to be me. I keep my mess to my bunk. I, you know, it, it's a big toss-up between Joe and Phil, I'm going to say. They got, like, they got either almonds everywhere or coffee everywhere or, or Skittles everywhere. So, yeah, they're the messiest. All right. So why do you think music is so important? I think it's important because it's a universal language. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to, you don't even have to speak English to connect to music. You know, or, or we don't have to understand German to connect to a good song, you know? It's just a cool, you can just feel the emotion just straight through the music. So it's, it's a beautiful thing. Alrighty, and our final question. What does making music mean to you? It's everything. It's who I am. It's who I've been since I was 13 at least. But even before I knew I wanted to play music, I was playing music. You know, um, it's everything. You know, it's 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 basically my savior. You know what what got me through what I went through at growing up as a kid. So it's my everything. Alrighty. So everybody, this is Adrian from Assuming We Survive. Be sure to check out their album and check out their music. Thank you so much. You. Alrighty. Hey guys, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching that interview, and I wanted to say another thank you to Adrian and Assuming We Survive for allowing me to film them and have another follow-up interview as well as I wanted to apologize. Sorry guys, this video is kind of late. The interview was conducted quite some time ago but I found the footage and I'm putting it up on the internet for all of you guys to watch and I hope you all enjoy it. Alright, hope to see you guys again soon. Bye! Mwah. <laughs>